Gospel of April the 24th, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. So you will also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us take a peek of the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas uh, returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. They exhorted the, the disciples to persevere, to persevere in faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed, they appointed elders for them in each church. With prayer and fasting, comm fasting commended them to the Lord. They traveled through Pisidia, Pamphylia, Perga, and Atalia, and there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they now had accomplished. When they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them. And also from the second reading, which is from the book of Revelations, I, John, saw a new heaven, a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a, as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. He will wipe every tear. There shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain. All right. First of all, the central part is, of course, the gospel. The Lord, right after Judas has left them, says, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. And we would have to wonder how Judah the Iscariot represents that glorification. The fact that he is going to betray him, and which is something bad by itself, is not the glorification itself, neither the fact that he left there. But the fact is, the glorification of God is done through the law of Jesus Christ, true man, who in his human conscience freely and knowingly embrace even death out of love for the Father and you and me. Let us remember that Jesus of Nazareth is both true God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, the Son, and a true human. And he has two conscious each conscious, conscious is one is divine, for he is the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, and one is entirely human. And between them, there is no division, there is no confusion, there is no mixture, there is no separation, according to the Council of Chalcedon. So it is truly and fully totally aware the human conscious conscience that agrees even to death and that is why God is glorified in Jesus he has become truly the son that loves the father so much so that he is ready to die for that love that love is what glorifies God and then God will glorify the Lord after his passion. So much so that that human body of the Lord Jesus, when resurrected and glorified, 
even though it's the same Lord Jesus that was born from the womb, the blessed womb of the Virgin Mary, now is glorified and even the persons that knew him better cannot recognize him. For example, M Mary Magdalene, who are you? Or the, or the apostles, they think they, he is some sort of ghost. But the reason is that his love has triumphed over death. Let us remember that God is love. And that is how the Son, the human Son, is resembled to the Father. Because he is not afraid to die out of that love. Then he says, I give you a new commandment, love one another, as I have loved you. There, he's restating the first commandment, the one in the chapter 4 of Deuteronomy. Hear Israel, our God is one, and you should love our God, your God with all your heart, with all your life, and with all your strength. But now it is, only, it is not only just to God, but with that very same love, we have to love each other. And even if we say that we love each other, but if we do not act accordingly, then we are not truly followers of Christ. Because the Lord says, in that love, if you have that love, they will recognize you as my disciple. So it is not enough to have been ordained if you do not love the others enough then you're not disciple of the Lord. And we see how Barnabas and Paul risked their own lives to travel over the countries that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit commanded them because they love them and they love God. And we also see the promise of God. In particular, I want to make this point. John is seeing that New Jerusalem, the spouse, the bride, to be wed to the bride, to the groom. And actually, that dwelling of God is your body and my body, my, yourself and myself that transformed, transfigured by the uncreated energies of the Holy Spirit is becoming, we are becoming holy. Let us remember also chapter 17 of this same gospel, the gospel of John. If one loves me, says the Lord, he will keep my words and my Father will love him and we will come to him and dwell in him just as we have read in the book of Revelations. I will dwell in him. He will wipe out every tear. There will be no more death, nor pain. And that is beautiful. We should strive with all our might to comply with what God is asking of us. Because what he is offering already, what he has already given us, is something that we absolutely cannot attain by ourselves. It is the innermost desire, the greatest thing that no one could have ever dreamed. Eternal life, eternal love, God Himself dwelling in us. That is the Holy Communion. That will be fulfilled. But we are already enjoying it every time that we go to the Eucharist. Until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.